The brushes and erasers are basic yet essential tools in working in digital art. And these will most likely be what you're using for the duration of your concept art pieces, so it's good to get more familiar with them. And this tutorial is going to take a more in-depth look at what brushes and erasers are, the different settings, and how you can go about editing them. So to start off, what exactly is the brush tool in a digital art software? And the brush tool can be thought of as a giant combination of traditional media tools into one. So it can act like a pencil, it could be your paintbrush, it could be an airbrush, and even more custom awesome brushes like metals of rust or even foliage, whatever it may be, you can find that all by using the brush tool. So now let's head into Photoshop and check out the tool, the settings, and the different menus that you can go ahead and change. So the brush itself can be found on the left hand side in the toolbox, and it has a paintbrush icon to represent it. And when you click it, you may notice that the tool settings bar on the top changed to correspond to the brush tool itself. And the other menu that I want you guys to have open is the brush menu. And it's a floating window, and if you don't have it open, it can be found under window on the top bar, and just choose brush. So with the brush tool selected, you may notice that when you lay it down on the canvas, it'll create a bold, solid line that doesn't have any size variation, and we can go ahead and change that. So in your brush menu, there's a lot of different options you can go ahead and check, and you can kind of go in and experiment what each does, but for this tutorial, we're only going to be focusing on the shape dynamics and the transfer. So the first thing you can do is turn on shape dynamics, and if you're still getting a solid line, it's because you have to go in and change your control from off to pen pressure. So that will make it so that it'll register how much pressure you're putting on the tablet, and the harder you push down, the larger the width, and then the lighter you press down, the smaller the line will be. And if you wanted the minimum diameter to be about half the brush size, you can go ahead and change the second slider bar to about halfway, and then no matter how light you press, it won't get any smaller than that initial size. So now that we have some line variation to our actual brush, let's go ahead and turn our minimum diameter back to zero, and now let's check our transfer option. So initially, if you have the same problem where you're not seeing anything, you have to turn your settings from off to pen pressure. So that'll make it so it registers so that the harder you press, the more solid the color will be, and then the lighter you press, the more opacity it will appear to have. So those are the two most basic options you should be aware of to affect your brush. And some artists like to have only transfer turned on in case they like to blend more where some artists just like having shape dynamics on to create really clean line art without any opacity to it. So now let's take a look at the main brush settings menu. So if you click on brush tip shape, it opens a menu where you can see all your preset brushes and it gives just basic settings that you can go ahead and edit. So the one that looks like a circle with the two dots, you can go ahead and affect the actual thickness of your brush. So if you want it to be more flat, you can go ahead and choose one of the circles and then pull it in. And you can also change the arrow if you wanted it to be at a certain angle. So you can get some really interesting shapes for that. And usually a lot of environment artists will like to change the shaping of the actual brush. So another thing you should look at is spacing. So if you space it out far enough, you may notice that you'll get kind of a dotted look to it. So then if you do it on the canvas, you get like a polka dot effect. And if you keep playing with the different settings, you can really create some cool custom brushes that you can go ahead and use in your work that is much different than the given standard brush. So now let's talk about some keyboard shortcuts and tips on using the brush in your own work. So I'm going to go ahead and choose this drop down menu and choose my basic brush. So whenever you need to go ahead and find a brush, you choose this top down menu and select your brush. And this menu also lets you save brushes by choosing this post-it note icon. So if you have a particular brush that you have settings that you really like to use, you can go ahead and then save it by clicking the post-it note icon, name it, and you can see how it appears at the very bottom of the brush menu. And if you wanted to move it, then you can open this little tool button and choose preset manager to move them around. So with this basic brush selected, I'm going to go ahead and take out that layer. And if this is your first time, or you may notice that you're getting some weird effects going on when you're laying your brush tool, it may be because your spacing is set a bit too high. So typically, if it looks like this, where you can start to see the individual circles, that means your spacing is too high, and you can go to the brush tip shape menu and just lower it to something where they're not quite as visible, like that. 
Now while you're working, you're probably going to be wanting to change the size of the brush quite frequently. And there's a few ways you can go ahead and do that. So the first way is by using the slider bar, which can be found in the brush menu and in the top menu bar up here. But those are kind of out of the way and you want to be looking for more efficient ways to changing your brush size quickly. So the first keyboard shortcut is you can use the brackets on the keyboard. So the left bracket makes the brush size smaller and the right one makes it larger. Now while that one's great, there's an even faster one that you can do. So on a Mac, it's holding Control and Option, and on a PC, it is Control and Alt. And if you click those two and then press on the tablet, if you slide it left and right, you can change the diameter of your brush instantly. And then also if you slide up and down, it'll change the hardness of the brush. So this is a great keyboard shortcut that you can go ahead to use to really cut the time of your concept pieces down and really keep you moving rather than being distracted by having to go to a menu or moving your hand off the keyboard and pressing on the brackets. So now the keyboard shortcut for using the brush tool is the letter B. And the keyboard shortcut for using the eraser tool is the letter E. So you can see if you switch between them, the icons on the toolbar change. So now we've gone through all this work to learn about the brushes and you're probably thinking, oh great, so now we still have to learn about the erasers. But the best part about learning the erasers is you've already done just that. Because the brush settings and the eraser settings are practically the same, except rather than adding pixels, you're taking them away. But that doesn't mean that you just use it just like you would an eraser. So you can also think about how it adds to the actual piece itself. So if you lay something down with your brush tool, you can go ahead and grab your eraser you can see how that can create different shapes. So don't think of your eraser as just something that it takes away mistakes, but also use it to your advantage on how to add to the composition. And if you're really curious about getting to know more about the brushes, you can go ahead and download the brushes we have on Concept Cookie, or go forward with making your own, and really experiment with what brushes may work better in different situations. But just know that most artists, even professional ones, will stick to a few basic brushes for most of their pieces and then use maybe a textured brush or something just to add that extra bit more of detail. So now you should have a basic understanding of how brushes and erasers work, how to go about editing the different settings that they have, and feeling comfortable with using them in your own work. And if you want to, you can also look at the brushes handout that we created for this tutorial in case you just want more of a step-by-step kind of reminder of what to do. So thanks again for watching and in the next part we're going to go over layers and how it separates traditional and digital media.